There is one book <clears throat> on planet Earth which is 100% reliable for those who believe. And that's the King James Bible, the authorized version. I'm reading from Romans chapter 5, verse 1, what the Apostle Paul wrote 2,000 years ago and is valid now, today, 2015. You don't believe it? Tough apples. It's bad for you. I believe it. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul is telling you, is telling me, is telling us, we are justified by faith. Now, can you underline? Have you got a Bible? Go and underline this in your Bible. If you haven't got a Bible, go and get one and underline this. Therefore, being justified by faith. Why have you got to underline? Hey, because, you know, if you listen to your pastor, your priest, the Pope, the President, the witch, the botch, I don't know, whatever, they tell you you're justified by works. Then you got to be really, you know, doing good works. Well, do good works. But they will not justify you. Because God says that you are justified by faith. And because of this, guess what? You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can have peace with God, 100% sure, the moment you're justified by faith, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And in verse 2 it says, By whom the Lord Jesus Christ, not your religion, my religion, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is a person who happens to be God, God the Son, the manifestation of God, the fullness of God, by whom also we have access by faith. Once again, is by faith. Is by faith, not by works. Can you underline this too? By whom also we have access, access by faith. You know, access means the door is open. The door is open. How? By faith. In what, in what do you have access? Into this grace wherein we stand. You know, it looks to me that <clears throat> after 2,000 years, actually 2,015 years, people either don't know, or don't want to know, or they didn't read it, or they're totally, you know, plain ignorant, that we are in the dispensation of the grace of God. And God is not into the business of building a kingdom now, but now <clears throat> is building the body of Christ which is, guess what, the new creature was a mystery, has been revealed. It was a mystery hid in God, has been revealed now. Unless you don't know. So it's still a mystery for you. You're still following <clears throat> Jesus according to his earthly ministry. You think you are Israel? You think you are spiritual Israel? And you are just wrong. You're not Israel, and you cannot, by works, access God, but by grace, and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Now, I said we are the body of Christ. I said we are in the revelation of the mystery. Let's see here if the things I say are an invention that I just invented this morning, you know, because I feel very funny when I want to invent something new. No, Romans 16, 25. Now, now, you understand now? It was not yesterday. It is now. To him that is of power to, to do what? To establish you. That's very important. Remember, we stand, we get established. According to my gospel. Which gospel? The gospel that Paul is preaching. Not the gospel that Peter and the eleven are preaching. Not the gospel that Jesus was preaching in the days of his earthly ministry, which was addressing the nation of Israel. Not the, the, the gospel of Moses. This is the gospel of Paul, which is the gospel of grace, which is actually the gospel of Christ. And so he said, to, Now, to him it is a power to establish according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, Yes, according to the revelation of the mystery. Did you ever read this in your Bible? Maybe you did. 
but you read, you read really fast and you're confused. Or you, you never underline this, the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret. What? The mystery was kept secret since the world began. So, this is different from prophecy. Now you have a plethora, a never-ending of people that are in the prophetic. The end of the world is just around the corner. In the day so-and-so, this hour, you know, the heavens are going open and the tribulation is going to start and fire. Wait, wait a moment. Wait a moment. If you read this, you are in the wrong dispensation. You are in the dispensation of the kingdom. You are actually in the dispensation of the wrath of God, which is the great tribulation, which is also called Jacob's trouble. And you and I, you know, maybe you call Jacob, <laughs> like, but we are not Jacob. So that's nothing to do with us. Maybe you are in Matthew 24, in the so-called end times discourse of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is fantastic, it's true, but is it in the future, it doesn't pertain to us, the body of Christ. Because this mystery was hidden God before, you know, since the world began, began, which is different from prophecy, which has been revealed since the world began. Let's go, let's go back to another book, the book of Ephesians. Okay, in Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul tells us something very important. And you, as he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past, oh, oh, time past, Underline time past. Ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Underline this. The prince of the power of the air. Who's that? He says here. It's the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. This is not the Holy Spirit. This is the evil spirit, the wicked one. This is Satan. Okay? Who established a course in this world? among whom also we all had our conversation when in times past in the last of our flesh fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others but god please underline by god <laughs> these two words by god by now by god by now is always something fantastic following who is rich in mercy? Thank you, Lord, for that. God is rich in mercy. For his great love, where when he loved us, hmm, great love, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. And he's telling you again, by grace he has saved. Hmm. And has raised up together and has made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I read it again. And has raised up us up together and made us sit together in every place in Christ Jesus. To what intent? That in the ages to come, oh, now we have individuated. Time passed, and now we're talking about ages to come. In the ages to come, it might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not all works, lest any man should boast. This is absolutely in line with Romans 5.1. And then, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them, not as should, now listen, wherefore remember, Ephesians 2 11, wherefore remember, you got to remember this, I got to remember this, that ye, he who, us, it's not talking to Israel, it's talking to the Ephesians, so it's talking to us, Gentiles, being in time past, aha, uh -huh, now we have an individual, another time factor. You remember, time past, but now, Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision, but that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time, what time passed, you were without Christ. So when Jesus was walking this planet, praise the Lord, in his earthly ministry, 
you and I, the Gentiles, we were without Christ. Oh no, yes. Being aliens, but not from another planet. We were on this planet, but we were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. We had nothing to do. God never made a pact, a covenant with us. In fact, we were aliens and strangers from the covenants of promise. Did you know this, please underline? Plural covenants, no covenant. So the Old Testament, called also the Old Covenant, and the New Testament, the New Covenant, and all the covenants that God did with Abraham, with Isaac, with Jacob, with Moses, with David, nothing to do with us, having no hope and without God in the world. That was a disastrous condition. Unfortunately, for many people, it's just like that because they don't believe this book. They don't believe in the gospel of Christ. They don't believe that Christ has done all that was necessary for our salvation. But dying for our sins and being raised for our justification, they try to save, them, save themselves with their useless, pointless, dead works. So that was our condition. Let's see what happened. We talk about time past. We talk about ages to come. But now, <laughs> but now, but now, now, but now, I love this. In Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. You understand now? Time passed, ages to come. But now, this but now is called the dispensation of the grace of God. I really don't care if you say that you don't believe in dispensations because you will find the word dispensation if you use the proper Bible, which is the King James, and not only once, and you'll find this in the Gospel of Christ, which only Paul preaches, and the dispensations are talking about a past time, a future time, but he's talking also that but now, this is the time. The, more, the, the world is not going to end tomorrow, not in three months, not in six months, not in all the days, not when there are the blue, red, the big moons, uh, satellite, whatever. The world is going to go on and on and on until the Lord himself comes down from heaven to take his body, which at the moment is by faith and by grace in Christ Jesus, and takes us to the heavenly places, the new creature. Okay, that's called the rapture, even though that word is not in the Bible, in the King James Bible, is in Latin, from the verb in Latin, rapiemur, we will be, uh, you know, taken away, like an, snatched away, you know, catched away, yeah, into heaven. When the Lord Jesus comes in the, in the air to pick up his believers, his body, resurrecting the, the bodies of the, 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 the ones that sleeping in Jesus, and transforming instantaneously the twinkling of an eye the bodies of the believers now now it says we are made near nigh by the by the blood of, Jesus, of christ the blood of christ please underline this not your works not my works not your prayers not your confessions not your repentance not your water baptism not your speaking in tongues and not you giving money to the church not putting money in the in the pockets of this so-called self-proclaimed prophets and, and preachers and teachers. No, we are made near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. You remember the, what we read in Romans 5.1? We are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by faith. By faith. And that's it. He explains also here. For he is our peace. The Lord Jesus Christ is our peace. No, your religion who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity. We were enemies of God. Even the law commandments contain in ordinances. And there are some people that want to, you know, in the church there are two ordinances, the water baptism and the communion. Well, you're dreaming because we are not in that. For to make in himself of twine the Jew and the Gentile, one new man. Can you underline one new man? New means new. Means it didn't exist before. 
So what are you going around saying that you are Israel? That already existed. But the new man, no, is new. Is the new creature. We are created in Christ Jesus. So making peace. And that he might reconcile both the Jew and the Gentile unto God in one body. Did you read this? In one body, by the cross, and is laying the empty thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them were nigh. I said to you, grace and peace in Christ Jesus.